We are currently at the Blanka, the border, crossing border between Moldova and uh, Ukraine. A uh, couple cars, less than then, waiting, people staying inside a car, waiting to go back to Ukraine. And compared to February 24, it's a huge different situation. We met a student, Veronica, from Nigeria. She studied in Odessa University for computer science. It all started February 24. I came into Ukraine February 18 and I came into Moldova February 25. And I stayed at the border for uh -huh. more than 12 hours before 12 hours. I was allowed to enter. So she been running around between Moldova, Romania and Ukraine, trying to figure out what will be her next step. This kind of situation is happening more and more and more. So no one wants to see the war happen, but the war did happen. And then what's next for the regular uh, population residents, no matter you are local residents or international foreign students. What Siji can do for partnership is we sign engagement memorandum. So they will help us to de deliver the services. Apparently, Moldova have half million refugees from Ukraine. 50% are children who need to continue to have education. Israel already have staff on the ground. They have four full-time and close to 30 um, team members around the whole Moldova borders. I came on the March 9, basically, almost in the beginning of the war. Start to work in Palanka border. It's the Polanka border post when Israel put a tent to assist the women and children because it was really cold. If we had people walking through the borders, didn't know where they were going, so they would come to our tent. We would try to give them some tea, some time to, to talk with them, calm with them, let the kids to play, provide a change of clothes, change of diapers, everything. So that's basically what I started to do. I am also a social worker. I have a degree in social work. So that's what I started to do, basically, to talk with the people, to see what they need, to uh, yeah, figure out, assess what, what we can do here, how we can help. Immediately after the, the, the crisis, uh, the second week of the crisis, we were already here and um, uh, we are working with uh, um, kids and with mothers that are basically 95% of refugees overall. Uh, we have a, a children-friendly space in the other pavilion uh, where kids can come for three hours in the morning and three hours in the afternoon and they can have some uh, activities, uh, educational activities, some psychosocial also activities. We are working with our personnel that is training to work with uh, uh, children uh, to provide with some educational activities and also some uh, psychosocial support. Many kids they 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 draw these these scenes with blood and uh, it's something that we really need to to address. Uh, the kids they need someone who is uh, taking care of them. They listen to them and uh, work with them on some any kind of support. Just listening to them it's already something. Because the, the kids also maybe they don't look like, but they also are traumatized. We are trying to support them through the provision of uh, uh, mental support. So the Sunflower Center is a holistic hybrid uh, place for refugee children and mothers to come um, who have fled Ukraine into Moldova. And we are a holistic uh, community center where mothers can come for uh, trauma-based psychosocial support through something called a mom's club, where we provide uh, group counseling, art therapy, and classes like yoga and breathing. And we also have a donation center. And we also provide early education childhood classes through art, music, athletics, and dance and creative expression. And uh, we also are very proudly employing uh, Ukrainian refugee women here at our center as well. We were a poorer country than Ukraine uh, before the war started. So uh, this is also amazing that even though we have these difficulties and vulnerable families uh, themselves, we still uh, reacted like this and we try to support uh, as much as possible. As families really receiving their families, Ukrainian refugees, which is very unusual. Usually it's like big shelters and things like this. So 80% or I think even more of uh, refugees are not in shelters, but in, in families. I'm a mother myself. I couldn't imagine myself in this situation. And if I was ever 
in this situation, I would hope that there was some other mom across the world that'd be willing to support me as well. So I just, being a part of a larger, you know, it's not just, you're not just American, you're not just Moldovan, you're not just Ukrainian, but you're part of a, a global community. And so I just wanted to give back in that way. I'm European. I would never think about coming to Moldova visit. It's like not, definitely not on your bucket list. And then I met here those incredible people who from the first day when the border started to be this flood of refugees and they will take people also to their houses. They will say, you know what, you can come because the people who were crossing, they didn't know what to do. And uh, I was there in Kiev and I spent three days in the Italian embassy, you know, under, you know, underground, uh, you know, hearing like bombs and uh, small arm shooting. And then we were evacuated here. Uh, and, and when I was here, when I arrived, I just felt that I needed to do something for, for the Ukrainians. I spent three years there, so I feel like, you know, attached to the country and to the people. I see that what we do, it's something that has an impact on the everyday, everyday life of, of people. And this is what I care the most, and this is what I'm doing. I, you know, I, when I see the kids that are happy and playing, I feel much relieved. <laughs>